Good morning, and welcome to this week's Sunday School lesson entitled, Triumphal Entry into Jerusalem. Let us begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Father, we ask that you guide us through this lesson so that the receivers will have a better understanding of this triumphal ent entry into Jerusalem and see Jesus as our Messiah, the one and only that we look up to and we feel gracious to have as our King and our Savior. These, we ask that you bless us, all that are, that will hear these words and all that will use them as fruitful guidance in their lives and up and, and others that they touch. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name, Amen. Scripture lesson will be coming from Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 11. Our key verse reads as follows. Tell the daughters of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and a coat, the foal of a donkey. That's Matthew 21 and 5. Scripture lesson. Verse <clears throat> 1. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a coat with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone, if any, if if anyone says anything to you, just say this: the Lord needs them, and He will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, "Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and and on a colt, the foal of a donkey." The disciples went and did as Jesus has directed them. They both they brought the donkey on the coat and put their clothes on them and sat on them. A very large crowd spread I'm sorry, a, <clears throat> a very large crowd spread their coats on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him that followed were shouting, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowd was saying, was saying This is the prophet, Jesus, from Nazareth in Galilee. The introduction Unit 3 brings us to a liberating gospel of Jesus Christ. We open this lesson with Jesus' triumph ride into Jerusalem. This humble service riding on the coat can be found in all four gospels. Mark 11, 1 through 11. Luke 19, 28 through 40. John 12 and 14. Although his arrival is a humble means Jesus is met with a large crowd cheering and declaring him as the Messiah. Many components of Matthew narrative are validated validation of the prophet Zechariah for telling of the Messiah. There are also indicators scattered throughout the text that God's divine hand led Jesus through every step and even leads the disciple to a place where the coat can be found and used for this historic ride. The crowd reaction to Jesus is comparable to celebrity arriving, arrivals, setting the entire community on fire with excitement. As they lay down their palm branches and coat along the road, there is no indication that this would be Jesus' final days of ministry. This holy day recognized the significance of God's plans for salvation. 
It also gives further light into the human condition and the propensity towards sin as rage, betrayal, abandonment, and the greed leads Jesus to fulfill his mission to die for humanity and become the savior of the world. Telling the Bible story. Matthew intertwines the triumph entry into Jerusalem among various events within Jesus. Last days on earth, from healing the blind men along the road to cleansing the temple, Jesus used this time to demonstrate the power and reveal the true meaning of the scriptures. It appears that Matthew, along with the other gospel, with the other gospel writers, needed to illustrate that Jesus' priority was to teach of coming of the kingdom of God as well as prepare the disciples for his death. The steps, the steps leading to the entry was equally meaningful. There is considerable importance in obtaining a coat and a donkey for Jesus to ride. To, as proclaimed by the prophet Zechariah 9 verse, verse 9. People laying clothing on the ground as he rides into the city symbolizing his status as a prophet and a king. They shout the word, Hosanna. This means, meaning is one of admiration, but also a cry for help, for salvation. The scripture indicates that some people were unaware of Jesus' question, what was happening? The response appears to be unanimous Jesus is the one who will save the people from their oppressors. The scene is similar to a political rally where followers seek their candidate to win a high-ranking position. There's a set agenda. By these fickle followers, free them from the Roman oversight and rule. Their call to justice is misplaced in the scene. In the scene. For Jesus is not replacing an earthly king. On the contrary, Jesus is setting the stage to be the king of kings. Sankofa. People are fickle. You may find some people who appear to like you. Some may say they are for you. Others may say uh, adamantly that state they believe in you. But when you stand for what is right, you may stand alone. Those who have taken a stand to advocate and fought for justice often face much opposition, even when fighting for others in need. They may be hailed as heroes one moment and hated the next. Taking a stand for what is right is not easy. It is an apparent in the African American history, as many protesters and boycotters were jailed, beaten, bombed, and even killed. Yet, the road to justice needed faithful servants willing to walk this path. People find it even more difficult to stand for justice. Standing for Jesus requires more, not simply wearing the garments and the paraphernalia but actually endorsing and spreading the true gospel meaning of the gospel. Jesus, <clears throat> James Alexander Forbes, Jr., the senior minister emeritus of the Riverside Church, an interdominational church in the Upper West Side of Manhattan, wrote, Help, Post of Duty. As a pastor of this diverse congregation in the heart of New York City, he understood that he had to stand not only for justice, but for righteousness. Let us all pray that we do not grow weak on our post of duty. As this faithful servant wrote, O oh Lord, here we stand. We have heard the experience of Peter and John, and we have heard the experience of John who was on the Isles of Patmos, we see the handwriting on the wall. We know that times will be difficult, but we must stand 
and seek the Lord to help us, teach us, guide us through these uncertain times. Case study. Many young people are unaware that riding buses in Montgomery, Alabama ignited one of the largest and longest anti-segregation organized protests held in the United States. Many are aware of Rosa Parks, who refused to move from a white section of a bus, leading to her arrest and igniting a massive protest in Alabama. The Montgomery bus boycott lasted from December 5, 1955 until December 20, 1956. During this time, Black refused to ride the buses. They walked miles to get to their jobs and return home. Blacks who owned cars began carpooling and offering rides to others who had long distance to walk. The 381-day boycott drew national attention. It reminded people of the purpose. Walking miles every day was the, the in-law that condoned discrimination. Eventually, in 1956, a three-judge federal court ruled in Browder v. Gill that Alabama racist practice of segregation law for buses was unconstitutional. However, the state of Alabama appealed the court decision. Eventually, in 1956, the U.S. Supreme Court upheld the district court ruling. The state of Alabama had to pass an ordinance that blacks were able to sit in any seat of the public bus. Many blacks walked for miles over a period of months to create a space for reversing this discriminatory law. They did not have any cheering crowds to greet them. What they had was faith. Life application. Most people are familiar with parades which celebrate the great accomplishment of a group of people or major event. Each year, people gather in the streets to honor champion athletes returning home. The beginning of a holiday season, or to even to recognize a new leader in government. These moments can just be a fleeting as the story of Jesus entering into Jerusalem. Human nature soon forget the joy felt when acknowledging a person moment of victory and honor. However, the highest honor each person can get, give is to the Lord, Jesus Christ. Jesus gave his life so that anyone who can be liberated from the bondage of sin, freed from the final destiny of the grave, God's love for humanity is beyond the, the accomplishment of a professional sports team. Furthermore, reflecting on this faithful day in Jerusalem requires a conscious introspection or inter introspection of our relationship with God, with Jesus Christ. As believers, we must stand for the gospel and stand for the principle and the commandment to love one another. This love requires us to be intentionally intentional in our intervention for others. Let's read that again. This love requires us to be intentionally advocating for justice or helping someone in need. The victory is only won when we show others that we will stand or take a stand for our faith in Jesus Christ. The question that we can ponder this week, what are some of the most prevalent and concerning social issues in today's society that the church should address and take a stand? Question two, what are the consequences of the church becoming complacent and silent about these and other issues? Our closing devotion is a, is a familiar hymn of the church, Ride on King Jesus, which is the ride that Jesus took on the coat and the donkey. It's an African-American 
in our African American Heritage Hymnal. You can, you can find that on page 225. Our closing prayer. We bless you, God. We bless you for the favors and the mercies of the year, for health, comfort, prosperity, the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. We bless him for even the tribulation of our lot in this land, which is, without a doubt, schooling for future greatness. We bless him for the promise discovered by this discovered to sight by signal providence of useful usefulness and exalted service for him. In this nation, in coming times, and we beseech him for the Redeemer's sake to make us faithful men and women in our families, with our children, in the church, and in the entire race, for the glory of his great name, the successor and the safety of nations, and for the good of man. Amen. Amen. And I pray that you enjoy our service today.